So hi everyone and welcome to another episode of Womeny Matters. Uh, it's my privilege to have on the show someone who has really beaten a path that few of us could have imagined. Uh, she's been an actress in a leading soap on Indian television and from there has gone on to become a very well known name in the information security industry in India. Uh, please welcome Karishma Mukhi. Karishma, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. So, um, Karishma, like I just said, you know, uh, your journey is, it's mind blowing, like, you know, from an industry which is considered the diametric opposite of everything to do with uh, privacy and uh, information security to, you know, being someone who is in the education aspect also of information security. Um, tell us more about your journey. I mean, it, it, it sounds really exciting. We'd like to know more. So, uh, you know, when I was young, I had this uh, friend in school who used to always say, this is what I want to be when I grow up. And when I was asked this question, I never had a straight answer. And I think till now I don't have a straight answer. And maybe that's the reason why my journey has been so uh, full of bends all the way. So I started with doing my BSc honors in biophysics. And uh, somewhere when I, when I got admission in MSc honors and I started, I said, this is really a long journey. <laughs> I'm going to do master's, I'm going to do PhD, I'm going to do specialization, super specialization, and then I'm going to start earning some money. And around that time, I came to Mumbai for my sister's son's uh, birthday. And uh, some of my friends were going for auditions to Balaji. I said, Chalo. They said it was impossible to get through. So I said, if it's impossible, I should go and give it a shot. And I went for the audition and I got through. So uh, that wasn't impossible. I got through very easily. What was really tough was convincing my parents. Uh, and here I would like to mention my father's a colonel in the army and uh, my mother is a teacher for 25 years and a principal for five years. So imagine telling these guys, you know, I want to leave MSc honors and I want to do acting. <laughs> they were uh, like, uh, to say the least, very upset. And they were like, this is not happening. We're not going to allow you to go. And uh, I, my father loves waking up in the morning. So his routine starts at 5 a.m. He goes for his walk. He has his coffee. He takes the dog for a walk. And he sits in the garden and has his fruits. So for a month, I woke up at 5 a.m. just to patow him to <laughs> let me do this. And I told him, okay, just give me one year. I will go to Mumbai. I will do this for one year. Consider it as a break. I've been studying since school. And you know, then I got admission in BSc honors. I didn't drop a year. Let me have this one year off. Let me see the world and I'll come back and I'll join. And my professors gave the permission for me to take a one year break. Right. They said, Karishma, whenever yeah. you come back, we will give you admission. Right. I was one of their favorite yeah. students, I would say. So I said, my professors have agreed. I mean, come on. So uh, Papa is like, this field is not for women. And how will you be safe? And you're going in Mumbai. And so ultimately, my mother came with me. And uh, my mother has always been the strong support for me. And she's always said, you know, that when I was young, I wasn't allowed to do half the things I wanted to do because I was a lady and I will not let that happen with my daughters. So for me, whatever my daughters want to do, I will stand with them. And she left her house in Chandigarh. She came to Mumbai and she used to actually come on the sets with me every day. But she did all that just to give me that platform, which she didn't have that I could do what I wanted to do. So I came here and I started acting. And acting in television is not easy. <laughs> it's, uh, it's crazy. Uh, I used to work for 12, 18, 20 hours a day. There have been days when I've come home, taken a shower and gone back to work, literally. So uh, the, uh, some, somewhere there, my parents uh, were behind me to get married. And uh, that, that's another story we'll keep for another day. So I, uh, we alt I ultimately got married to uh, KK Mukhi. And he is uh, very well known in the information security uh, world. He's touch wood, made a name for himself. He's done very well in that field. And uh, when I got married, he and my father sort of uh, got together to get me to leave acting. So they kept every day telling me, what, you're going for acting, there's no meaning, you're wasting your intelligence, and why don't you come to office and give it a shot? And I just started going to office for the heck of it. And believe me, I understood nothing of information security because I'm a, a biophysics student who has gone and done acting. But I learned while I was there. And one fine day, I saw that uh, 
he was taking interviews and uh, he was not being very kind in his interviews <laughs> so i told him i mean you know i know you are the boss and you know you are nice people and uh, why are you asking them questions which you know nobody knows and he said but that's the whole point these guys should be knowing these answers and that's where i understood that there is a big gap in information security between theoretical knowledge and actual hands on practical knowledge Mm-hmm. so what these mm-hmm. young kids are learning out there is they're not getting a system to do any practical knowledge and when they go for jobs the questions are asked are practical so they don't have the answers it's like me teaching you about say football and telling you all the techniques but not letting you go out on the field and play yeah yeah so how will you ever be good at it so i spoke to my husband and i said why don't you start training these students you know and bridge that gap and he said see i don't have time for this i'm running my consulting business if you like this idea you do it so i thought all right let's let's start and uh, i thought at that time that i'm going to get a lot of help from him and he's going to make the website and make the courses and design the courses since he's so good at all of this but he said it's your business so if you want to do it you need to first uh, read up about it learn it and then start it mm-hmm. so i took a long time to first read up about about information security of course i am not i'm not great at information security but i understood what it was all about i understood what they needed to know i went through all the courses that different universities and colleges were teaching i spoke to different people and actually uh, what the companies wanted these people to know and i designed courses which made these students job ready right so that's when really my journey uh, of being an entrepreneur started and uh, i've heard most uh, you know interviews where people say i started with a small office well i didn't start with no office i started with one chair and that too was not designated to me it was ki if someone is absent and there is a chef we karishma sit there in office uh, that's where i started from <laughs> and every day i had a different place to sit in the office because there was no designated chair for me and we had a small office at that time so from there to uh, the first big milestone for me was when my first batch of students passed out and they all got jobs uh initially when i asked uh my my husband's company you know the hr uh, people to uh, give jobs to our students they said they don't hire freshers i told them at least interview them they are freshers but we've taught them practical things and they refused to interview and then i had to use the card that no you have to interview these uh, children at least once and uh, they interviewed them and they loved them and all all four, uh, the first batch had only four students all four of them got jobs so uh, from there to where we are today today i have companies who are getting in touch with us and asking us when is your next batch getting uh, over because we want to hire your students and uh, network intelligence the people who completely didn't want to hire our students are like we we want to have the first uh, choice of refusal for all the students and before my batch is over they want to start interviewing them and uh, most students pass out with at least one job in hand so it's it's been a long journey and a lovely journey that that sounds really wonderful and uh, well like you said everybody says that they had a small office in a garage or something but you know starting from a chair to putting out that yes. many chairs for your students in a lot of offices is quite commendable so, thank you so um, much so karishma tell us you know i mean because you were from the entertainment industry you know um, i mean as an actor like you said you did not know much about information security and it is largely a male dominated field um yes what kind of bias did you face did you face any over because you were you know the boss's wife uh, you know you had some amount of uh, protection from the bias actually if you're the boss's wife it's tougher believe you me <laughs> it's easier if you're just someone who joins if you're the boss's wife everybody expects a lot more from you yeah it it, it was a huge learning curve for me it was not easy at all and uh, the first thing i did was i tried to look the role so i uh, tied up my hair tight and i would wear uh, formal clothes and go because i didn't want people to even remember that i was an actor first because the notion is that if you're an actor you're a dumb blonde so uh, as terrible first, as that is as, you know because being an actor requires a different level of empathy it requires intelligence right so for people to assume that you don't have a brain is quite unfortunate 
it is it is very unfortunate and if you see most uh, i won't say most but lots most of actually most of the actors are very intelligent and and it's they have so much empathy which i don't see otherwise but there is this notion that if you're an actor you're a dumb blonde and i completely uh, don't agree with this notion because actors have a lot of empathy they are they are very intelligent people most of them are very well educated so having this notion is absolutely wrong but in india it, it is there and it's it's a very strong notion so it's uh, it's been a little tough to sort of uh, break that stereotype that yes i am an actor i was an actor and uh, yes this is what i'm doing now you know and it's very true and i think uh, you know more so i think if you're a female actor no i think um, yes yes yeah absolutely. because you you get tired for your looks not so much for your talent apparently and uh, that is uh, the first stereotype that you need to break when you you know you move away from the domain of presenting your face on the screen to presenting your talent and then eventually doing something more with that talent absolutely um, so um you know as a young uh, woman you know i mean uh, as an actor living in bombay of course your mother was around to help you um you know uh, making that kind of money and living that kind of life um uh, what kind of decisions did you make how did you deal with you know uh, the sudden because even when we get out of college you know i mean all youngsters we have this in, uh, the the money seems to be very overwhelming so what kind of choices did you make uh, how did you deal with all of that so uh, when i when i came here my parents did set me up but after that i never asked them for money so my first uh, priority was to be able to sustain my own living myself and i had a specific standard of living which i wanted to uh, make sure i could sustain by myself and uh, to tell you the truth the first paycheck we just want to go out and party and spend it all <laughs> but uh, after that phase finishes you want to save you want to make sure that uh, you sustain your uh, way of living and then now uh, i was very fortunate very very lucky because my parents uh, uh, invested all my money and uh, i was lucky because they did not say spend us the money and we will invest it it was always a discussion it was always okay should we do this or should we do this this is the returns here and this is what we think and what do you suggest and then because i didn't have the time they would go ahead and do it for me so uh, at that time with my limited knowledge in uh, finance what i had decided is that i want to put my money i want to diversify it and put it in various different things so i invested in property i invested in sips of course i put some in fds and uh, i did not really go into shares because for some reason at that time i uh, did not believe that i had the uh, experience to do shares and to make money in shares Mm-hmm. so i thought sip mm-hmm. is a safer bet for me right and the uh, ppf and all of that so that so i diversified in all those things which were sure uh, returns which i would get you know and my parents helped me a lot in all of that and uh, i still remember when i wanted to invest in property and that's where i start i thought that property is uh, amongst the best investments for me because the first time i saw a flat it cost x amount and uh, i thought okay i'm going to go and leave to chandigarh i'll discuss this with papa because papa uh, my father is very good with property and he's made most of his money in property and then i'll come back and then i'll buy it so i went i discussed it with him when i came back the price of that property was one and a half times x wow. wow so i was completely off my game and i was like okay i don't have this much because i had decided on x but i love that property so i spoke to papa and papa said see uh, gurya you love the property go ahead and buy so papa i don't have the money he says take a loan but i was not sure about taking a loan because actors uh, you know salary is not a confirmed salary so i said no i'm not take a loan i waited for another 6 months thinking the property price will fall in another 6 months the price was two times x and that was the time when property market was going only up so uh, in that one and a half year of me being indecisive that property price i think when i started looking was if it was x by the end of it it was around 3x wow okay and i uh, could not buy that bigger place anymore and i had to buy a little smaller place but i said i'm going to put money in property now <laughs> this is surely going to fear of missing out yes yes absolutely uh, but i i did miss i did miss miss out at that time because of my indecisiveness so uh, what i feel is uh, at that time when you are young it's you don't see think you don't see much into the uh, future 
you feel okay let let me put this money let me enjoy let me uh, go for dinners and have parties and let me spend it on my clothes but what we really need to do is we need to save some mm-hmm. and we need to make sure that we save for a rainy day and what we save we have to diversify in different things because Absolutely. you cannot have all your eggs in one basket yeah you never know yeah. uh, i'm not that good i don't know who is to say okay for sure uh you know this specific share is going to go up so much i'll put all my money in this at least yeah. for me i i never had that uh, sort of experience so i would just put it all uh, everywhere you know <laughs> no, but see that's practical right because to say that one particular type of investment is going to give you the best returns or it will definitely give you returns is foolhardy right and is, uh, is crazy yes yeah i mean so at one time i thought okay i'll put all my money in fds at least i get an assured return but yeah. then the return is very less Correct. So then you say, okay, let me let me try something else, and then you see, and it works. So you say, okay, let me try something else more. And that age is the time when you can, you know, do trials and make errors, and you know, learn from your errors. So I was lucky. I But started you're saying it's really time. important, you know. I mean, I love what you're saying because uh, fundamentally, youth gives you that much of scope for error. It gives you scope to experiment, to learn. and if you miss the bus on those years when you know you don't have that many responsibilities uh, your cost of living is lesser because you know you don't have school tuition to pay or you don't have college fees to pay uh, you don't have any other emis um, all of those things are really critical in allowing you to make those risks right i mean to take up absolutely that extra little bit of risk for a better return is something that youth gives you the benefit of and the more risks you take the more you learn absolutely and the more you learn the better you can invest later you know this yeah. is this is what i feel so if you ask me today i would not take half the risks i took at that time obviously i mean you know i mean at that point i think you had only yourself to worry about your parents were not really your responsibility in that sense absolutely um, yeah, you know yeah. it was a choice that you could afford to make and today when you have children and you have a family to worry about and you know you're concerned about the future it's not the same thing so yes, um, yes. very so well at, at that time it was whether i should buy a bag or i should invest <laughs> that was the difference yeah i think that's the right amazing now, thing you know because uh, increasingly a lot of women these days see that brand label as a very critical uh, you know redeemer of their self worth uh you I'm know so the, sorry but i do not get the brand label things at all i just don't tell us more because i think this is something you know a lot of young women need to hear <laughs> i mean all right you you like something you want to splurge on something it's okay but you, the brand you're wearing the what you're wearing the size of diamond you're wearing is not something that defines you and all women need to stop thinking that that parameter defines them you define you nothing else so rather than investing on jewelry and brands and bags and shoes invest on yourself make yourself a better person i that's that's how i feel so, so if i if i have excess on that investment on yourself how do you define that improve your skills work on yourself uh, do some social service you know the the kind of happiness you get by doing social service you will get nowhere else so i know and, through this uh, covid period you've been involved in a lot of uh, you know uh, efforts to uh, help migrant Not workers me. go home uh, oh my god you've done your research huh? <laughs> always <laughs> not me my husband my husband has been uh, really been doing a lot of social service and uh, i would say i'm blessed because uh, i i'm blessed to have a partner like him who uh, is thinking so much about people who others are not thinking about and is putting his life at risk to help them that's amazing <laughs> so um so karishma tell me another thing okay um now obviously since you and uh, your husband work together in a sense right because uh, you founded your information security education company with him um yes how do you deal with your so finances his, his company is the parent, parent company yeah so uh, you know do you take away a salary again, again i would say i've been very lucky mm-hmm. uh because my husband has maintained from day one that i need to be financially independent okay i have my, i get my own salary what i do with my money is up to me mm-hmm. uh we do discuss that okay this is what i plan to do this is what 
I think is a good idea or he will say this is not a good idea or it is a good idea, but it is my money and I invest it myself. Of course, uh, taking his help, uh, taking his advice, but I have that financial independence to do whatever I feel is right for him. So um, and is, I it, think, um, is it only one way or does he also come to you for advice occasionally? Of course he does. Of course he does. We discuss, we discuss everything. So uh, if he plans to invest in something, if he wants to, uh, whatever the investment is, he always discusses it with me. I always discuss it with him. But having said that, it's not that he is doing everything and I am not doing anything. And I feel that is the biggest mistake that most women make, mm -hmm. that we don't have time to invest our money. So we've given it all to our husband and he's going to invest it for us. Then how are you financially independent? Exactly. That's what Sridhar is all about, right? Because that's exactly what I'm trying to tell women that just because you're partners, uh, you know, you all need to remember that it's a partnership in every sense, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And most and most women think that, no, if I have financial independence or if I'm handling my own money, then there's something wrong in my relationship with my husband. No, it's not. I think we have the best relationship and we have our own independence. And if he wants to invest in uh, a company or in some shares, he'll discuss it with me. If I feel like doing it, I'll I'll discuss it with him. If some investment is giving him good uh, returns, he will tell me, okay, Karishma, you want to invest in this? This is giving good returns and vice versa. And I see nothing wrong in it. I think that financial independence is, is very important. In fact, I have to tell you this. A few years back, my husband sat me down and he said, okay, uh, Karishma, I need you to know... Uh, you know, what all I own and uh, where all it is and all about my investments. So I've made this document for, for you because if tomorrow something happens to you, I need you to have all this. And I got very upset and I said, are you mad? Nothing is going to happen to you. And how are you talking like this and this and that? And he waited for a day to, for me to cool down. And he said, this is the problem. And now I understand what he said. He said, this is the problem. So when the husband, something happens to the husband, I hope it never happens uh, to anyone's husband, but if something happens to the husband, the wife is clueless. Yeah. Where yeah. are the bank accounts? Where are the investments? What is the properties he has? How many insurances he has? The wife is absolutely clueless. And so half the money that he has spent all his time and effort in accumulating doesn't go to the wife. In or fact, doesn't the go to the family because they're oh, all the or to the children or to the family because everybody's clueless as to where his investments are. Yeah. So it's it's never yeah. it's never too early to make a document and share it with your spouse and tell your spouse, okay, these are my investments, these are my insurance policies, these are my properties, here are the documents, so that she is well informed about everything. Because we all think that you know something wrong happened there, but it will not happen to us. Yeah. But you never know. Life yeah. is very really unpredictable and you should always be prepared for the worse. And have you also done so the he same thing? Have you also made a similar list? Coming to that. So he made yes, yes, I was coming to that. He made this document and shared, shared it with me. And uh, it took me a month to actually sit down and make this document because uh, I have been doing investments for a long time and I've got stuff, you know, small, small stuff all over. So I actually sat down and First, it took me a month to convince myself that I need to make this document because something might happen to me as well. And then I uh, made the whole document and I shared it with him. I password protected it, of course, and shared it with him. And uh, so he has a document of all my passwords and all my documents and all my uh, investments and the same with me. And I, th I think it's very, very important to have. I that. think it's beautiful, you know, because what both of you are doing is fundamentally, I think the foundation of a healthy relationship is trust and honesty. It's not dependence, right? Because the dependence doesn't have to be about money. The dependence has to be emotional. And the, the trust, the confidence that you're there for each other is more important than the yeah, trust that he's not going to run away with my money and I'm not going to run away with his money. No, that's not how it works. This is so critical. So I'm going to just, I'm just going to change a little thing in what you said. I don't think you need to be emotionally dependent as well. That's mm -hmm. not a relationship where, where you are too dependent on the other person. Okay. Uh, one thing that women feel is that, okay, I have a husband and I have to be dependent on him for everything. Hmm. No. Be yourself. Stand up on your own two feet. You don't need to be dependent on any, anyone. And emotionally, women are much stronger than men. 
yeah amen to that because um <laughs> you know as life teaches us that you know women are resilient right and it's something we don't give ourselves credit for and i think a we fundamental mistake all women a lot of women make is uh, saying you, you know making their husbands the center of their existence yes right yes. your your partner doesn't have to be you know he doesn't have to be the reason for your happiness or to bear the brunt of your unhappiness and i think Absolutely. that gets vented out on your partner more than is you know uh, permissible or more than that is fair and yeah, yeah. if you if your partner is the center of your universe then there is a lot of expectations from him yeah this is something i learned from my dad that the lower you keep your expectations the happier you will be in life absolutely and this is not just for your partner this is for your children for your uh, parents for your family for your friends for everyone the lower your expectations are the happier you will be in life if today i i feel like doing something for someone as long as i can do it and forget it Absolutely. it's good but if i'm going to do something and keep thinking i need a return something in return that's wrong because then you're always going to be set up for disappointment that's so profound karishma thank you for saying that because um it's something that even my father always taught us you know that the lesser your expectations uh you know the lower the, the chance of being disappointed are. yes yes absolutely and like we keep saying you know neki kar darya mein dal if you do good for someone don't expect Absolutely. something in return and um, and why should my happiness be dependent on another human being yeah so it's not and this is something my husband said he said you know if if i define your happiness then there's something wrong with you absolutely so so we need we need to have a relationship where you are happy and i am happy you know and you're not dependent on me for your happiness and i'm not dependent on you for happiness of course we love each other we are there for each other but it's not that if today he doesn't answer my call for 10 minutes i'm going to become upset and i'm going to start crying and i'm going to go in a depression you know absolutely i i need to be that self sufficient that self reliant that i am and i need to tell myself and i need all women to say this to themselves that it's only them who is important your happiness depends on you and you alone it's a mistake a lot of women yes. make with their children that you know uh, they they pour the the essence of their existence into their children and so when those children have grown up and they've got lives of their own and those children don't have the time to spend with you that they probably never actually had in their life through school through college through their work hours you know absolutely they just fall apart my children don't love me no but that's not the case because you know you don't want your children to be that dependent on you and therefore neither should you be that dependent on your children yes absolutely and uh, you know like like you need to give space to your children also they they need to have space to grow if you are going to be too uh, into them into their lives they will not have space to to grow at all as, we, as women we we feel first our life is about our parents then our life is about our husband then our life is about our children when will our life be about us let's totally. let's change this and make our lives about us and everything else will will all come in place and women who are happy will be better happy or wives will be better happy or mothers if i am if i am not if i am unhappy and i am in a depression i cannot be a good mother absolutely however much i try absolutely so if i am happy if i am in a good happy place i will be the best mother always true that karishma and i think uh, you know women also need to st uh, stop seeing themselves as selfish for prioritizing their happiness or oh, their yes. growth <laughs> you oh, get yes. stigmatized for oh, even yes. saying this absolutely absolutely and we and women need to stop judging other women which okay. is the most important the other day i saw a uh, i know there is another friend of mine i have just come on insta a couple of months back and i uh, so this friend of mine wrote a big post because someone shamed her for being a working mom and she actually put that post out and she said see i am i am doing this after i put my child to sleep and then i've done it and i've been with my child all day and who the hell are you to ask me questions whether i am raising my child or my nanny is raising my child and i know she is the best mom ever she she has she is there with her children whenever they need so being a third person it's very easy to say she's a she's a working mom her children are being brought up by the nannies and the maids how dare you how dare you judge other women 
every every lady is doing the best that she can for her children for her family and being women we should understand that and one thing i have realized in all these years it's not the men who judge us it's the women who judge us yeah so yeah. we need to stop doing that to each other so either this this girl is parting too much so she's not there for her children or she's a working mom her children are taken care by the maids or you know though she's sitting at home she's not with her just leave it she's doing the best she can do for her children ask her children if you have any doubts no but How happy actually, there is no reason to even ask that right because ultimately nobody's pointing Why fingers at you to judge exactly Why you to judge other women just just look at your own lives yeah and uh, another thing is if if i'm not happy if there is something i can't do i put it on the other person so yeah i i say find happiness in yourself rather than finding fault in me to be happy absolutely we need to stop projecting our uh, you know flaws or failures our incompetence yeah our failures others. onto other people absolutely yes, yes. um so karishma i know i'm going to I'm, uh, half the people are going to hate this what i'm saying that's what we do with our investments right we don't put all of our eggs in one basket so how can you make one relationship or one person the basis of all of your happiness each person Absolutely. each relationship is a different investment okay and it will give you different levels of happiness and it it has no bearing on the other absolutely and you need to invest on every relationship of your life you need absolutely. to invest in, in every aspect of your life so uh, and being a working woman i think you will understand this most it it's you are a juggler and you've got lots of balls up in the air at any time and you need to keep juggling yeah and make sure yeah. none of the balls drop right absolutely absolutely so karishma what's your advice to you know the young women out there uh, especially you know aspiring actors uh, women you know who uh, haven't received the kind of break so we'll split your advice into two parts one for you know aspiring uh, female actors and the other one for all women out there so uh, for aspiring actors what i would like to tell them is hang in there it's tough it's a tough field and uh, it's 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 not easy at all it looks glamorous and pretty but it's not easy secondly you do not need to compromise on your principles and your morals at any time and a lot of people are going to make you believe that you need to compromise on your principles or morals you do not and take this in writing from me in fact people are going to respect you much more if you draw the line very clearly so always uh, make sure that you tell them this is what i'm okay with and this is not what i'm not okay with and that line has to be very very well defined thirdly uh, the shelf life or uh, you know the uh, the time till when you're going to get the shows or the acting uh, work is not going to last forever so don't uh, splurge all your money save make a nest egg you will need it later in life also uh, at this time when you're acting and you're saving you feel i'm just saving a little bit it's you know but later on you realize that that investment has doubled and tripled and it's giving you so much benefit so it's always good to save something and invest it and uh, fourthly we all are busy but make sure you have your investments in your own hand you should always know where you're investing how you're investing you should try and understand what is working for you what is not working for you because you will need this later on in life absolutely when you're in your, when you're in your 40s you cannot take chances you cannot uh, you know try new things so try them now so uh, this is the advice for uh, actors and for women in general i would say believe in yourself you are beautiful you are intelligent you are awesome don't let anyone put you down and when i say anyone i mean not your parents not your husband not your friends not your children nobody should be able to take away the light from you you need to believe in your heart and your head how amazing you are and you being a lady can achieve whatever you put your heart to if i being a biophysics uh, person can get into acting and can go and run a company in information security you guys can do anything believe me so nothing is impossible absolutely nothing just believe in yourself make sure you uh, invest make sure you handle your money yourself stop saying that okay before marriage my father is going to look into my money and after marriage my husband will look into my money and later my child will do it for me no you need to do it yourself 
invest your money know your investments know where your money is have your own checkbook have your own credit card have your own debit card know what the whole system is all about know how much you're earning how much you're spending how much you're saving please save some money for a rainy day because rainy days do come and it comes in everyone's life so the more you save and uh, saving we at that time feel let's save uh, let's do investments which will get us the best uh, assured returns but assured returns will always be less returns so that is something you guys need to figure out yourselves whether you want assured lower returns or you want to take chances for higher returns that is a choice you need to make but try everything that is out there be financially independent and live your life on your own terms let nobody else define your life for you no that thank you so much karishma that was really enlightening and uh, very candid if i may say so because uh, to be able to say what you think is i think quite a blessing uh, and women don't and realize no, it as often not, as they do not always most people <laughs> don't like it yeah but uh, we really appreciate the fact that you know you speak your mind and uh, you know you've given us so much to think about so thank you so much for your time it was really a pleasure having you with us and um, stay safe thank, thank you well. so much thank, thank you, so you so much for having me